My name is Krishna Kabra. I'm the CEO of Sunny Your Children's Discovery Museum. And with me today, I have... I'm Sarah Shire, and I'm the founder and executive director of the nonprofit Compassionate. Wonderful. And so today, we're here to talk about compassion mm -hmm. and where compassion lies in the world of parenting. Um, and Sarah has kindly agreed to be with us to share her... Um, she's a font of knowledge in that world. So uh, mm -hmm. we're just going to have a brief conversation about, about that. So Sarah, tell me, what is, in your mind, what is compassion? Compassion is a response to suffering. So with compassion, we recognize suffering and we have a desire and a willingness to alleviate that suffering. Great. And then um, in the context of that, mm -hmm. why self, well, what is self-compassion? Why is it so important? So self-compassion is very important because you can't offer compassion to others if you aren't also taking care of yourself. You have to attune to yourself while you're attuning to another person. Self-compassion is treating yourself the way you would treat someone you care about, with kindness, as, with encouragement, as a mentor. And instead, most of the time, we berate ourselves or we're very hard on ourselves for any kind of mistake that we make. But with self-compassion, we're gentler with ourselves. Right. And in the world of parenting, that is incredibly important, right? And yeah. it seems to me that within self-compassion, the heart of that is a deep sense of empathy for yourself, too. Yes. Yes. Well, people confuse empathy and compassion quite often. Okay. So, so I would like to, yeah. to distinguish the difference between those two. So empathy is feeling what another is feeling. So you can have empathy for someone when they're happy or sad. It's just either a visceral feeling, like I, I, in my body I can feel the pain that you feel. It also can be something cognitive, so I can imagine what it's like to be you. That's right. empathy. Yeah. So that's a part of compassion, being able to feel what another is feeling. Mm -hmm. But the compassion piece with, what's added to that is then doing something to make that person feel better. So that's why I say I think self-compassion is a little bit better of a description than empathy for okay. self yeah. because you are wanting to notice what you're feeling inside and you want to tend to that in a kind way mm -hmm. when you're compassionate to yourself. So that would mean that it's pretty much a lot about sort of self-care is really important, right? Filling your bucket mm -hmm. so that you have enough to give to others. Is that is that kind of what you're talking about? Yes, you do yeah. want to take care of yourself. They're, again, those aren't exactly the same thing, but self-care is a component of self-compassion. Okay. You have okay. to make sure you're getting enough sleep and you're eating well and you're exercising and you're doing the things that you need to do to be fueled so that you can show up for the people you care about. Right, which after the world, the world in which we live in and after the year that we've had, that feels so important. Yes. Right. Yes. I think it's been very challenging for everybody just to carve yeah. out that time. Yeah to um, for the self-care as a component of um, compassion. So one of my favorite quotes is the Viktor Frankl quote, which is between um, stimulus and response, there is a space. Um, in that space is our power to choose our response. And in that choice or in that response lies our freedom to grow, right? I love that quote. Um, because as a parent myself, what it reminds me to do is to take that moment when I'm being triggered by my kids and I have a 14 year old so there's a lot of that that happens. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Exactly. Uh -huh. um, and to give myself that space so that between the stimulus and response I can reset or just actually use my heart to come from a place of compassion. Mm -hmm. Does that resonate with you? Absolutely. Yeah. That's a that's a important component of compassion actually is mindfulness. Right. So this pause that you're taking before you act, that gives you a moment to notice how you're feeling. Maybe you're agitated, you're about to flip your lid because you're frustrated or annoyed, and you're not going to act very skillfully when you're coming from that place and you're parenting from that place. So if you take a moment and even just take one deep breath, that can give you the wisdom you need to act skillfully in a compassionate way. So right. If your daughter needs something, um, instead of being upset with her, you can validate her feelings and just be present with the pain she's feeling. And that to me is the difference between reacting and responding. Yes. Okay. Yes. So taking a breath is one way. Yeah. What, what, are the, what are some of the other things that parents can do to help in, in that moment so that they can be self-compassionate? 
Uh, something a lot of people like to do is to even place a hand on the heart to give them, remind themselves like I'm here and to give themselves a little bit of gentle touch to calm themselves down. The deep breath is, is the big one or you can count to 10 if that helps too. Anything you can do to just sort of regulate your nervous system and calm down before you act. And that also seems important to me because children learn by watching us. Yes. So modeling is a huge part of parenting. Mm -hmm. And if they're watching us take a moment, hopefully it it models the behavior of take a moment. Do and you, you can even say, I need to take a moment right now. I'm feeling frustrated. Mm -hmm. So just, just a second before you act and even saying that out loud and not only just showing them, but saying this is what I'm doing is a really skillful way to, to act in that moment. Right. And outside of that moment, what are some of the other ways in which we can teach our kids about compassion or the importance of compassion? Well, I'm a big fan of modeling. Yeah. So anything you can do in your day-to-day -day life where you're showing your kids what compassion looks like, whether it's acknowledging the person experiencing homelessness on the corner when you're mm. sitting in traffic instead of ignoring that the person is there, mm. even, you know, just smiling and saying hi, I think that's one thing that you can do. Um, being kind to your neighbors, checking in on them, really any interaction you can do throughout the day, especially whether you're with your kids or not, but they will pick up on that. So I want to share an example of, um, I feel like, you know, as parents, we've all had moments with our children, right? And I have a very distinct memory of my son when he was probably about two and a half, we're in London and uh, in some ice cream place. And, uh, and for some reason, at two and a half, he decided to absolutely flip his head. And he was beside himself, screaming and shouting. And my husband asked him the question. He said, no. And I asked him a question. He said, and then he sort of faced the wall and was like, sobbing. I'll never forget that. And I remember in that moment that what the only thing I could do to help him was to get on the floor with him and just literally be around and not even say anything. And at that point, I didn't even extend my arm to connect. I was just kind of there with him. So, and I think that that was the beginning of the process of me validating his really intense emotions in that moment. So let's talk a little bit about validating emotions and why that's so important. Yeah, well, it, it's, unfortunately, it's not something that most of us are taught. <clears throat> so this is a hard thing to do, but it's so important, whether it's for your kids or anyone in your life, if they're upset, instead of saying, you'll be okay, let's go, right? That's, that is not helpful. No. And if you've ever been in that situation, you know what that feels like, it feels terrible. So a very compassionate response when a child is pitching a fit about whatever, I mean, who knows why, right? Especially if they're two and a half, but it's to, it's to get on their level and say, I know, the, I know you're upset. This is, this is hard for you, right? And just acknowledging their feelings so that they know, oh, you see me and you hear me. Maybe I don't need to scream so loud anymore because you actually see me and hear me. That's such a compassionate response. And you don't, something we think with compassion is that we have to fix the problem. Right. We don't, compassion isn't fixing, right? right? We're able to be present in the midst of suffering. So we can be, just being present is often the best thing you can do if you want to be compassionate. So I'm willing to be present with you. I'll validate your feelings. And that is going to alleviate the suffering of another person most of the time. Right. And sometimes it's not even the word. Sometimes it's just putting your hand out to connect, right? Because um, with, well, with slightly older children, even it's like words, we can sort of stumble over our words and make it worse. So just being present, offering to be connected, perhaps through holding a hand, and then maybe I hear you, I acknowledge you. Yeah. Maybe. And then what can I, is there anything I can do for you? What do you need right now? What do you need right now? Right. Exactly. Right? Instead of, oh, just get over it, or maybe do this, this, and this, or whatever. We, we kind of want to do that. We think we have, we may feel like we have the solution because we've lived it, right? Especially if we're dealing with teenagers. Well, just do, don't worry about that. Things are fine. Just do this and this. And that, <laughs> that yeah. feels terrible for them. So yeah. just to acknowledge 
how they're feeling and then say when you do. Yeah, it's a, it's a human need, right? Like yeah. we do that with each other and with friends and, mm-hmm. you know, when you have that friend who's having a bad day um, because of whatever may have happened and you just go in to hug them and they just like melt, right? Yeah. Yeah. That That is also compassion. I think it's yeah. really important for our kids to watch us do that with each other as adults too, right? Yeah. So sort of we need to normalize the validating of the feelings, yeah. right? So also thinking about the screaming toddler in the ice cream store, another thing you can keep in mind is self-compassion. Right. So in that moment, when you're a parent and there are a hundred people, it seems like, watching you and your kids screaming, that is so stressful and it's hot, it's so hard and it might be embarrassing. I mean, it feels terrible for you. So taking a moment and saying in your mind, this is hard. This is really hard for me. Yeah. And know and being okay with that, placing a hand on the heart if that's helpful, or holding your own hand and just acknowledging this is a tough moment mm-hmm. and I'm gonna do my best here, but this is hard for me. And that can help again sort of calm your nervous system and help you show up as a better parent. Mm-hmm. And but recognizing it is hard. I mean, it's hard for all of us as parents. So remembering that um, is, is super important. I think the other aspect of that is patience, right? Yeah. Um, we used to call that moment, that some of the, one of those tantrum moments, like the target moment. The majority of us have had a moment in target when someone's having a meltdown. For some reason, there's something about having a meltdown in target. It feels like uh-huh. a rite of passage, maybe, as yeah. a parent. <laughs> okay. 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 So, um, and I think in that in that moment, there's the sort of recognition of, oh, everyone is looking at me, and they're going to think that I'm a bad parent. And I think one of the beautiful sort of aha moments with parenting, and I, I think we all kind of know this, but we have to remind ourselves is that in our, the only perfection there is as a parent is to be imperfect, yeah. right? Like we're not going to get it right all the time. In yeah. fact, most of the time yeah. we're not going to get it right. Correct. Um, so let's talk a little bit about granting ourselves the grace of not being perfect. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a really important element of self-compassion. So we have to remember that as parents that we're doing our best mm-hmm. And we need to be kind to ourselves when we mess up because we will, we do, right? Yeah. Maybe on a day, daily basis, probably. So yeah. just remembering, I'm human, just like everyone else. I'm trying my best, and then we can move forward and try to learn from our mistakes. But again, even just modeling that for our kids will be tremendous. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sarah. This oh, is amazing. Yeah, so helpful. You're and welcome. in today's world, it feels like we really need to be reminded. Yeah of compassion to ourselves, to each other, to our children, um, and to just not be so hard on ourselves, you know, as you were saying. So I really appreciate you coming here to share your knowledge with us today. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you.